Okay, so this is the uh, adding RAS support for CXL port devices. And this presentation was uh, put together by uh, Robert Richter, my coworker, and uh, myself. Uh, Robert was not able to attend today, um, so here I am presenting. All right, so CXL and RAS. Uh, as we all know, uh, CXL can support three different protocols. That would be CXL.io, CXL.mem, and CXL.cache. And as you can see here, we have a table from the CXL spec, and it shows the different uh, RAS requirements for uh, each protocol. In general, it's uh, analogous to the uh, PCI protocol errors. And so protocol errors detected by CXL components are escalated and reported to the host uh, through PCI errors and they're using, I'm sorry, the CXL.io protocol. And specifically they use uh, uncorrectable and correctable internal AER errors. Uh, the delivery is actually using messages over CXL.io and the uh, RAS protocol errors are handled uh, differently than the device errors. Device errors are actually using the uh, event log in the mailbox, and it uses a totally different interrupt, and so that's not covered here, and, and we don't want to get those confused. So we have the PCIe port bus driver. It's, it's used to bind to port devices, specifically bridge class ID, and in the... Uh, I'm sorry, in the probe routine, uh, the driver actually filters out for root ports, event collectors, up in, upstream ports, and downstream ports. And if it isn't one of these uh, subtypes, uh, then it returns an error. <clears throat> the port, uh, PCI port bus probe routine then actually reads the capabilities of that device, and it's looking for services that it can support. And this includes the AER, the power management event, uh, the hot plug, and the uh, virtual channel. And so the bus driver actually includes service drivers for each one of these uh, services, if you will. And I also wanted to point out that uh, the AER service driver itself is not usable unless you, are, you have your BIOS set up for a native AER platform uh, or OS first handling. And also the uh, kernel must be built uh, or compiled with PCIe AER config option. So this brings us to the AER hand, error handling flow. Uh, once the device detects a protocol error, it actually delivers a message to the root port, as we uh, mentioned earlier. The root port actually saves off the bus device function of the error device, and it writes it to the AER error source register. The root port then notifies the OS through the AER interrupt. And so we have the AER port service driver that is bound to that interrupt. And it handles the interrupt, if you will. And it reads the AER service, AER source ID, and it extracts the BDF, the bus device function. And that's the information, if you will, for the error device. And then the AER port service driver, it'll first thing it'll do is log the AER error, and then it'll call the callbacks if they're registered for that device. And that could be for correctable or uncorrectable errors. <clears throat> and then finally, that service driver, if it's necessary in the case of a fatal error, it can acquiesce the device or it could do a logical disconnect as well. So we have a recent upstream from uh, Robert Richter and myself and it addressed the, uh, addressed the CXL 1.1 downstream port error handling. And this was necessary because the RCH CXL 1.1 um, mode uses a downstream port implemented as a root complex register block. We call it an RCRB, right? The RCRB doesn't have a bus device function and that's what causes the uh, requirement for this patch set. Um, the PCI, PCIe spec 
uh, defines the RCRB without a bus device function. And that's not going to actually work with the AER port driver because of what we discussed earlier. AER port service driver expects a, a, a real PCI device. So as a result, the AER flow is a bit different, right? The detection in the downstream port is the same. It, it sends the notification to the RCEC. And um, the next thing that happens, though, is the RCEC's uh, bus device function is written to the AER source ID. Now, it, it doesn't quite make sense because it's the RCEC BDF. It's not the error device because the error device does not have a bus device function. And so what happens next is the AER service driver uh, recognizes this, this special case. It has a RCEC BDF. Uh, it has internal errors, and it's a CXL device type. And in this case, the AER port driver, from the changes in this patch set, it'll actually <clears throat> it'll actually call the it'll actually uh, parse the RCIEP. That's the children endpoint of the event collector, and then it'll actually call the error handler for that to handle this case. <clears throat> And so I should note that uh, this patch needs to be, I'm sorry, the patch was actually accepted. It's in 6.7. Okay, so this brings us to 2.0, also known as VH mode. And what I mentioned about CXL 1.1 does not apply here because it's a different topology. And so this is looking forward into the future with what needs to be done. And... <clears throat> So we have some constraints that we'd like to consider. First of all, we would like to maintain the PCIe uh, bus driver and, and the service drivers. And the reason is that we need these, uh, this other functionality. For instance, we need hot plug. We need the virtual channel. Um, we need the power management events. So we don't want to get rid of that. And the second consideration or constraint is that internal errors are device specific. Yes. So. Is, is Bjorn here? Bjorn Helgas? No. Um, because I, I, I don't know, but Bjorn has talked about not liking the PCIe port service driver and wanting to get away from that. Get away from that model. I, I, I haven't seen a proposal for how to get away from it, but like that's just there's just just there's some, there's some danger there, and and, and I, I feel like CXL is going to make this break one way or the other. Like really going to. Say you're going to bear it and keep it, or, or somebody's got to bite the bullet and and right. refactor the stuff. Yeah, John John had mentioned this as well. Um, it would probably be one of the options, but it's it's a much heavier lift. Um, and it's significant because it touches uh, everything and more more invasively, if you will. Beyond did accept a performance monitoring driver that had a, a similar requirement doing a fairly hacky solution to it very recently on purely on the basis that you didn't want to delay that for ages. Okay. So it may be a case of an intermediate solution and then come around again later. Okay. So this may be something we want to revisit uh, with, the, uh, with, the, with the option or solution you're, you're talking about then. Okay. We'll keep that in mind. Thank you. I'll, I'll, I'll go through and discuss what we, what we found. We have three options with the understanding that we want to consider this. Uh, so we also want to look at our requirements. Uh, the first is scalability. Um, AER is not a uh, is not a CXL protocol. It's actually a PCIe error protocol. And so we don't want to limit ourselves with whatever we implement. We don't want it to be CXL specific necessarily. Also, we need to remember that these are reported using internal errors, um, correctable and uncorrectable internal errors. And as far as as far as handling goes, uh, we also need the handlers to be able to implement uh, logic specific to that techno technology or device, and that, which gives us the flexibility to handle that specific need. And finally, we have enablement. We need the driver to be able to be enabled or disabled on a per, per device basis. So our first solution was 
to add a CXL RAS port service. <clears throat> we actually created a, a proof of concept, and so we were to begin, we were able to begin some of the testing. So what we started with was adding the CXL service driver next to the other service drivers. So was, if you will, parallel with AER, uh, the hot plug power management, and the virtual channel. We modified the probe routine to actually uh, look at the look for a CXL DV set capability. And if it was present, then you know you have a CXL port device. So the first challenge that we ran into is that there was a lot of required code uh, for, for mapping, for discovering and mapping the RAS register block. And so we were faced with, do we export this from the existing CXL driver or do we copy it over? So we didn't want to, oh, go, 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 go ahead. So we didn't we didn't want to add or you know increase coupling between a CXL driver and the PCIe bus driver, so we copied it over, and it got deeper and deeper and deeper. And we were going to have to do the same thing for the logging as well, right? There's already logging in the CXL driver, and we what, how are we going to handle that? We would have the same problem with this new CXL RAS service driver. So, so quick, quickly found this wasn't the best solution. Um, not only that, it doesn't meet all the requirements. This is just addressing CXL devices, right? And we said that one of our requirements is that we would like for it to work for all PCIe devices. So we moved on to solution two. Solution two was to actually update the existing AER service driver. What we did is we added a internal error callback. This is for the correctable and uncorrectable uh, errors. And we added it to the existing struct AERRPC. And this actually added uh, the generic callback functionality for the, for the port devices, but it wasn't for PCIe devices, right? We actually limited ourselves when we put it into the AERRPC structure. It was an improvement in that it didn't add as much code, it reused the logic, from the AER service driver, but again, it was just it was just port specific, not PCIe specific. So we learned a little bit more, and then we looked at solution three. It's a variation of two, and it allows any PCIe device to uh, take advantage of the internal error callbacks. And what we did is we moved the callbacks away from the AER RPC struct, and we actually put it into the PCI driver error handler. And so this is where all the uh, correctable, uncorrectable callbacks are. So again, yeah, we put that in there. And so we also had to add a registration function. It, it's important to note that in order to assign this, it has to be done at runtime, because remember, you're actually a PCIe port bus driver, and so, when you're predefining using the macros for your, for your PCIe device type, you don't necessarily know what kind of, if it's a CXL card or not. So this is one caveat that's not great, but it's better than option one and two uh, issues. <laughs> and so for this example, um, you would have a CXL port device. It's still bound to the PCIe bus port as it is done today, right? But you would have the internal error handlers that you could actually register such that you would get your logging for your port device error handling. So what we have here is a comparison for solutions three and two. Solution two was uh, limited to port devices, uh, which doesn't, again, meet, meet all the requirements. Uh, solution three uh, was actually uh, supporting all PCIe devices, which we found met all the requirements. So that is it. It's a quick presentation. Um, discussion, feedback, Q and A. Was, was there any other consumers on the PCIe side of the AER, um, like handlers? You know, the CXL, you showed it, but is there any other ones inside of the, the kernel right now? Uh, 
No, right now, okay. AER for the most part uh -huh. is consumed by the AER service driver. Okay. And in fact, you'll find very little AER logic outside of that. Okay. And this was something that we ran into in our uh, patch set, if you will. Okay. It's not totally true. It, it's true that the actual handle of the AER is at that level, but there are a bunch of callbacks on correct, yeah, correctable errors. That this, are still this is true. And if, you look, and if you look at the parameter that's passed, it's not AER related. And so, and we had we, we had to, we had to change the exporting of the data. Yeah, and you had that extra on in, in our patch set for that because there was actually a delineation that AER was not exported logically or available in drivers themselves. And in fact, I don't know if you remember, there was a patch set that went through review, and uh, that was that was one of the changes. Yeah, yeah, sure. But it's not true that AER errors don't end up processed by drivers. They just do it at a lower level after you've done some interpretation of what was going on and issued. Yeah, the yeah and, and the callback is, the handler is, I'm sorry, the callback you handler said. is invoked as well. Yeah. And it allows the driver to do some processing. Yeah. Is there any, it's a bit of a dodgy route, but is there any possibility that you could use a child device of the PCI port and basically search for whoever knows to handle the error to avoid. I mean, at the moment, you're trying to set a callback sort of one layer up in the, mm -hmm. the tree. And that feels a little strange, but I wonder if it's possible to basically go look for a handler um, in the device model. You don't want to search everything, but if you could search children, I can't remember if the thing is a child. So the root port children? Well, it would be the root port or switch. Port. Yes, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what, the, what it looks like in the device model. Moment. So, are you asking when the AER handler runs, how does it handle the, the children devices? No, not so much. Sorry. Okay. Um, the handler doesn't handle the not, not so much that, but whether there was a path that would avoid you. Have to, so, at the moment, from the description, if I understood it correctly, you're basically going in and replacing the handler in the PCI port driver. Well, we're actually introducing a new internal yeah, yeah, okay. handler. But, but you're writing it from a lower mm -hmm. level. A so registration it, function. Yeah. yeah, it sort of feels like it's it's almost going the wrong way up the device model. Um, maybe, maybe I'm interpreting it wrong, but that was sort of where I was going. And the question was whether you could go find the right, in the right direction. So I guess the question is during registration, like how do you know when to register the callback? So maybe that's something we... The callback is in the PCI port driver. No, the, no, it's in the device driver. Whichever one binds to the device. The endpoint? Any, yeah, whatever, the endpoint or anything that... Yeah. So <laughs> how does it work for a switch port? There's nothing bound to it. So this is a question that I think is open. Oh, okay. And <laughs> basically, because all entities in the topology, at least for CXL, right, they have um, uh, you know, CXL RAS capability. I think it's a requirement, right? Yeah. Um, so we need something to bind to them to do this. I think the simplest <laughs> method maybe that Terry was explaining is um, if they have a driver, then we can add handlers to them. And so whenever the AER handler walks the topology, like let's say you you say on a, on a special case like this, you walk the topology, and if it's an internal error, now you call this special callback for internal errors that's specific to that device. This might be something that could be broken out of into the from the CXL core, something that I was asking about earlier, um, where uh, at least this part could be common, and any sort of CXL entity could have this loaded. Yeah, yeah. I, th I think we're, we're, we're definitely going to get to the point where, like, I think register discovery and, and probably mailboxes are going to be broken out so that anybody can use them as a library. So, like, so if, if that changes your calculus on solution one, like, I was, I was raising my hand to say, like, oh, yeah, I think we should break that stuff out. And make it a library, so you don't, so you, because you don't have to duplicate it in all, all of the that, that was a consideration as well, but it, it seemed like a large, 
uh, change. It's a large change, but I think we have to, I think we have to do it. Okay. Like, I think there's enough people that are interested in like, oh, we can, we'll just copy like, it, uh, we just and, copy the way CXL does it is, is a is a refrain I've heard. Another option or to consider is that uh, the current uh, PCI capability <laughs> functions again rely on uh, PCI config space mapped registers. And if, if, if it could somehow work on MMIO, it would it would shrink a lot of the logic in order to, to, to find the register blocks. But have you thought about how this interacts with like CXL port objects? And I know we talked about, oh, maybe we could put something in the, but that kind of has the same problem as the PCI port driver. Uh, like, but in these air handlers, like, I mean, cause the handlers are mostly just reporting which link had which problem, right? Like, do you think you're going to want to report like the CXO port object name in those reports, or is it just going to, or you, or you only care about this BDF had this event, and oh, and it also had happened to have the CXO RAS capability attached to it too, and let people and let other people figure out, oh, this BDF means this CXO port. No, I think you could probably, I think you should be able to provide the port information as well. Yeah, but, but yeah, I feel like that, that's that, that's crossing like port like driver boundaries, like like the. Your, your generic PCI e air handler driver doesn't know anything about the CXL well, port topology thing yeah. inside. But, well, it also, there's another question as well, is when do you do the registration, which Yazin mentioned. mentioned. Um, and we don't, we don't have CXL port uh, PCI discovery, right? Uh, so you, we would have to choose where to do that. One place you could do it is in the, is, is in the port discovery and, the, and un, underneath the... Uh, ACPI uh, um, enumeration, right? When that happens. Yeah, yeah. Part of how we ended up with the CXL ports kind of on the side was so we didn't have to bother anybody, <laughs> and like we could just kind of uh, build this up this topology and and all these. But like, this makes me wonder, like, if we need to reverse that and actually go be PCI core integrated. That's what that's what John and I were talking about this morning. Yeah, because. Right now, we don't have any CXL port PCI devices. Yeah, we have a lot of PCI problems to solve to do that because there is no way of having a driver other than the PCI port driver for downstream ports. Um, that needs re-architecting for a whole bunch of other reasons around performance monitoring and other other standards that are expanding PCI on the only apply to ports. But it's a big job. We're going to be a while before we get there. Um, yeah, you could do that. <laughs> Jonathan, I think you had a good point though on uh, looking at top down from the port once you have the AER error, and then uh, possibly uh, from there searching. And, and, and there's actually merit in that because uh, scalability and that you could actually find the right device, if you will. Um, because otherwise, we actually have this is probably an issue with the design that we're something that would have to be resolved. Is that right now we're talking about a uh, callback per port, right? Um, like, I mean, building on Jonathan's idea of like broadcasting these things, like, I mean, it's already the recovery is already kind of a broadcast to so the apology, like, hey, somebody downstream of me handle this. I mean, like, would, would it be terrible to say, I'm going to broadcast this all the way to the I guess I guess you you don't want to have to depend on the endpoint driver being there to to, to say oh endpoint do you have any port up you know, all the way down you, you got to stop at the thing that caused the error. Let's take this offline. Okay. Um. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Thank you.